If you're curious about YouTube or how it works, or if you're interested in starting your own YouTube channel someday, in this video, I'm gonna go over my channel's growth and earnings in 2019. What's up you guys, it's Travis with Shop Nation. Today's video is a little bit different if you are a subscriber or have been following along thus far. I wanted to quickly recap 2019 as a channel as well as share some of the insights into running a YouTube channel if you're curious. So to be honest, I've been going back and forth on whether or not to make this video specifically about income for the channel. And really the reason I chose to do it is because when I've seen other YouTubers make videos like this, I really appreciate the candid nature and the transparency of what they're sharing. See, before I got started in YouTube, I really didn't know how any of this stuff worked. I didn't know how much money there was to be made in YouTube, and I certainly wish that more people would do this. Having said that, I totally understand why more people do not. It is uncomfortable, and I just have to make sure that the messaging is correct. So I wanna start right off the bat by saying this is not my attempt to show off or brag about how much money my YouTube channel is making. My intent in this video is to lift the veil on YouTube and kind of bring you behind the scenes to help you understand what goes into making a channel, growing a channel, and then finally monetizing that channel. Again, I used to be really curious how this stuff worked even before I had any intentions of ever starting a YouTube channel. So I hope that comes across in the video. My intentions are nothing but pure. I hope you understand that. So in this video, I wanna address three main topics. The first one is quickly review how the Shop Nation channel has grown in the past year. The second one is what the heck is YouTube and how does it work? And then finally, number three is showing you how much money Shop Nation has made in 2019 by breaking down the different revenue streams. All right, so 2019 for Shop Nation was definitely a growth year for the channel. So in total, we'll put out 21 videos. My personal goal is to put out a video every two weeks, so I should have hit 26 videos technically, so I fell short of that goal a little bit. We started the year at just over 25,000 subscribers and ended at 62,000 subscribers. So huge gain in terms of people that are subscribed to the channel, and I hugely appreciate it. So in January of 2019, we passed the 1 million view mark for the channel, which is a total of 15 months since the channel started. And then just eight months later, in August of 2019, we hit the 2 million view mark. And now here at the end of 2019, we're at about 2.7 million. The view count seems to be steadily growing, which is awesome. Now this kind of growth is great, but what's important to understand is this is over two years since starting the YouTube channel. That type of growth was definitely not happening in the early days. I think it took me like 150 days to get to 1,000 subscribers, which I'll admit was faster than I even thought, and then it took even less time to go from 1,000 to 10,000 subscribers. So if there's one thing to take away from YouTube, especially if you're thinking about starting a channel, is if you're starting a channel to make money, just stop now. You will burn out and quit well before any money shows up. I started the Shop Nation YouTube channel purely just to share what I was doing in my shop. I knew I was building a shop, I personally enjoyed watching people build things for their shop, and I didn't really see a lot of content dedicated directly to that. And we've built up over time, but it does take some time. So that'll be my one piece of advice. If you're thinking about actually starting a YouTube channel, make sure you're doing it about something that you enjoy and are passionate about, because money will follow. Don't do it just for the money, because you're gonna fail, I promise. Okay, so now let's talk about what YouTube is and how it works. So YouTube at its core is an advertising platform. That's all it is. If you didn't know, YouTube is owned by Google and Google advertises on the YouTube platform. So as a content creator, all I'm doing is presenting an opportunity for people to stare at a screen. And that's something that Google can monetize with ads. There's lots of tips and tricks out there to help grow YouTube channels and get more views and how do you beat the algorithm. It's really simple. YouTube cares about basically two things. The first one is click-through rate. So if they present a thumbnail or a title for a video to you, how often are you going to click on that? And that has everything to do with your search history, what profile it thinks you fit within, and what your tendencies are on YouTube. So if you think about it, on your homepage, at least at the time of recording this video, there's about 10 videos that are there. That's pretty expensive real estate for YouTube. They wanna be very sure that you are gonna actually watch one of those videos but simply clicking on the video isn't enough. The second piece, which is just as important, if not more important, is watch time. So after you click on the video, how long do you actually watch the content? Because the more minutes you watch, the more opportunities there are for ads to show up. So once you understand that, the amount of subscribers you get, the amount of views you get, the amount of likes you get are important and they factor into this algorithm, but that's ultimately not what's driving YouTube. What's driving the popularity of a video on YouTube is how often people are clicking on it and watching it. We've all come across these clickbait thumbnails that you see where it's maybe a guy in a swimming pool of money and the title is, I won the lottery, let me show you how I spent it. And you click on it and he won a $20 scratch off. 
well, you very quickly will just exit that video. So that reflects poorly on that video's performance and it's not actually gonna do well. Whereas if the thumbnail is engaging, it looks interesting, the title is relevant, you click on it and it actually delivers what it says it's going to deliver, you're more likely to stick around and watch it. So really it's just about understanding how YouTube actually makes money and it's through advertising. So if me as a content creator puts a video out and it gets eyeballs and watch time, Google takes that opportunity to place ads in front of those viewers and then pays me a commission. That's where the income from YouTube comes from. It comes from an entity called Google AdSense. You link up your account to an AdSense account, which runs the ads. And also, if you're wondering, the YouTuber or content creator has no input on what ads are actually run on those videos. Those ads are selected based on what it thinks you wanna look at or click on. So if some of these ads are weird and you don't really understand where it's coming from, that's on you, bro. Now, advertising is not the only way that a YouTuber can make money on their channel. There are other means like affiliate marketing, endorsements, promotions, product sales, merchandise, things like that. So in reality, for a small channel like mine, the ad revenue is actually pretty small, which you'll see in the next section. Okay, now for the juicy part. How much money did Shop Nation make in 2019? Once more, I'm sharing this in the interest of transparency. I truly feel like we're going down this journey together, so I feel an obligation to share, so take it for what it's worth. Now there's basically four different revenue streams that I take advantage of with Shop Nation. The first is goods and merchandise. That would be things that I sell like t-shirts, stickers, build plans, things like that. The second one is affiliate income. Now I predominantly use Amazon. This is the act of linking directly to a product that I'm showcasing or using in a build. And then there's ad revenue paid out by Google AdSense. Now these are the ads physically run on the YouTube videos. And then lastly are sponsorships and endorsements. Now these are agreements with a brand or product, which I would show as an advertisement to support a build or use directly in a project. All right, so for goods and merchandise in 2019, the total income was $10,222. $9,835 of those dollars came from Etsy. 387 of those dollars came from Teespring. Teespring is where I sell the t-shirts. Etsy is where I sell basically anything else. Something to keep in mind is that the Etsy store really started in about June, so that's about half a year's worth of income. The total affiliate income in 2019 was $7,286. This is predominantly Amazon, but there's also some Rockler as well as Home Depot mixed in there as well. The YouTube ad revenue from Google AdSense in 2019 was $6,346. And then finally, sponsorship income in 2019 was $1,831. That's made up of the product placement fees as well as the value of the merchandise that was given to me. So that means the total income for 2019 is $25,685. Now, like any business, income is one side of the equation. You also have expenses. But this is where YouTube, honestly, is really attractive because the expenses can be extremely low. I won't go too into detail on my personal expenses. If I were to break down just the necessary expenses, like cost of goods sold, which is the materials required to make the products that I sell, as well as the various subscriptions to software, bank fees, website hosting, things like that, the total costs for 2019 in those categories was $1,752. So you can see there's a potential for a very large profit margin. Now I chose to expense more than that. I personally chose to reinvest in some equipment, some camera equipment, lighting equipment, things like that. But again, that's personal to the YouTuber and the content creator. So for me, having run a YouTube channel for two years now, there's a couple big takeaways here. The first of which is that the ad revenue from YouTube itself makes up less than 25% of my income for 2019. Now there are very large YouTube channels with extremely high view counts that make six figures per month in ad revenue. So there is certainly money to be made, but from what I found out, a channel my size, the income is much less significant. So if I were to break down each category in terms of percentage, the biggest chunk goes to the sales of merchandise and goods, which is at almost 40% for my channel. The next would be affiliate income, which is about 28%, followed by the YouTube ads, which is just under 25%, and then finally followed by sponsorships, which is about 7%. Now, some of you may be watching this going, wow, there's a lot of money to be made in YouTube. I'm gonna go start a channel tomorrow. And I would urge you to do so, but go about doing it the right way and realize that money doesn't start showing up until much later. For example, Shop Nation in 2018, so not this past year, but the year before, did $1,877 and almost all of that showed up in the last four months of the year. Meaning for one year, I was making videos and putting in the work for nothing. You kinda have to have blind faith, putting out videos, putting in the time for no rewards, hoping that at some point, something might happen. With anything in life, if you're passionate about something, you'll be good at it and money will follow. 
YouTube is exactly the same. So I hope the information was useful. If anything interesting, I know I generally like to watch videos like this because on top of producing YouTube videos, I'm an avid consumer of YouTube myself. So I'm just generally curious how a lot of these channels work and how they're monetizing their channel. Because as you probably know, there are several people out there that do this full time. I've said from the beginning and I still stand by it, I have no intention of doing this full time, replacing my career or my income. I just kind of do this for fun, but I also enjoy the business side of it. If you plan on going down this journey, you're doing it for the right reasons, you have an interesting value proposition for your audience, just do it and don't quit. I have to credit my wife. I was gonna quit after episode two, because those early videos, I don't know if you've seen them, but they're pretty bad. So I was spending all this time making these videos that no one was watching, and let's be honest, they probably shouldn't have been. And after the second video, I kind of threw my hands up going, what am I doing? Who the heck is gonna watch this? Who cares what I have to say? I still think that. But at that point, I had no views to even support it. But my wife, she said, just stick with it. So I set a goal of doing 10 videos. And sure enough, at about the ninth or 10th video, I started getting a little bit of momentum. And that feedback is what fuels you to keep going. But there's plenty of people out there who are just chucking out videos into the vacuum of YouTube and not getting anything in return. But I can almost guarantee you that, again, if you're doing it for the right reasons, you're doing it about something that you're actually interested in and passionate about, it will work out. Stick with it. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. I appreciate you for watching. I know this wasn't the normal content. Next video is gonna be a really cool build all about shop organization. I've actually already started talking about it on Instagram. So if you're not following me there, be sure to do that. I'll see you guys on the next project. And as always, continue to pursue shop greatness.